You, I am Mitch McCoy. We're taking a live look from Texarkana, that area where rain showers just moved through. And with additional rain coming later today comes the potential for more flooding as we take a live look at downtown Little Rock right now. Certainly a gloomy day across the state as we continue to monitor all of the live pictures coming in from across the area and the Arkansas Storm Team closely monitoring the uh, Doppler radar right now as some of those rain showers uh, start to push through this state. And that is where we have meteorologist Hayden Nix with the Arkansas Storm Team also on standby today. Hayden, good afternoon to you. Um, it has been a uh, wet uh, 12, 13, 16 hours. <laughs> Yeah, it definitely has been, especially across areas of central Arkansas, where last night it was just a deluge that happened. We had just a small, narrow swath of very, very heavy rainfall, and we could see again today a similar setup. So I want to go ahead and show you what we've got going on right now, Mitch, and everybody who's tuning in to watch. And we appreciate you hopping on here real quick to kind of bring up the importance of what to pay attention to for tonight. So we've got more rain that's in the forecast right now and what we're going to continue to see as we go along throughout the evening hours. But what's causing all this, and I just wanna show you real quick, we've got two different systems that are working together to really bring a large surge of moisture in from the Gulf of Mexico. So our atmosphere over Arkansas is primed up and ready to create rainfall. And that's what we saw last night. And we've had a lot of that though, even some higher rainfall totals down across Texas and Louisiana, where they have uh, seen really the worst of the heavy rainfall creating some flooding problems. But what we've got going on is a large low and kind of some smaller lows kind of working around that sitting over Texas. And you can kind of see that motion there as we see all that moisture coming in from the Gulf and also the ridge with the counterclockwise, or excuse me, the clockwise flow of air around the ridge and the counterclockwise flow around the low, both working together to really pump up the moisture. And all we need is something to create a kick that's needed to convert that water vapor into rainfall. And that's what we had last night. And we'll continue to see the possibility again for tonight. So this is rainfall from the last 24 hours. And you can see, as I mentioned, we had a good bit of rainfall across areas of southwestern Arkansas. And as we had that line kind of moving in, and then all of a sudden, it ran into a boundary. And we had a really narrow band starting from just across areas of far northern Dallas County through western Grant County and into areas of Saline County. I'll go ahead and zoom in here and just kind of show you some of these estimated numbers that we were dealing with uh, in this area. We had uh, ranges from three to four inches uh, in parts of Saline County right there. And I even know that we had a couple of, yeah, 5.9. Now that's radar estimated, but we had some totals nearing 4.6, 4.7 inches, 4.8. So pretty incredible to see just an area that really was not that wide. I'll go ahead and just draw this out for you. A span of 15 miles wide, just kind of, uh, eyeballing an average there of where we saw some incredible rainfall totals, but look what happens off towards the east here. We had barely a few hundredths of an inch reported uh, along 530 uh, near East End and uh, down towards Pine Bluff. So really, it's incredible to see what uh, just a little bit of amount of working can happen in the atmosphere to create that setup. And we could see that similar case again with forecast track as I animate this through going into the evening hours. You can see another round possibly trying to set up in that area that's been rain soaked. Now, it's going to be very difficult to pinpoint the exact position, but I don't want you to take this to heart that this is exactly what uh, your radar app, hopefully you've got the Arkansas Storm Team app on your phone. This is what radar is going to look like. It just helps us give an idea of timing, the orientation of the uh, storm structures and showers and storms that we can see, and area-wise where we could be seeing this setting up here. So if these are shifted just a little bit to the west or a little bit to the east, the areas that got a lot of rainfall last night, may not get a lot tonight, but we don't know that for certain. So we wanna make sure because it's too close for comfort at this point, for those who had a lot of rainfall last night, just a heads up, the areas that we had flooding uh, across the streets in Saline County, and especially up towards uh, areas in Faulkner County, just be advised you may have that same problem come up again for several hours this evening. But notice by 11 o'clock, we should see that last wave kind of coming to an end and things quieting down after midnight through much of Thursday morning. But once we get into Thursday afternoon, we could see one last push of shower activity, hopefully this not becoming as widespread, keeping the showers on the more isolated side. Once we get to Thursday evening, we're gonna wrap up any flash flooding concern, but definitely seeing a lot of case for that tonight. And that's why we need to monitor the situation there. We've got a flash flood watch until 7 p.m. now for tomorrow evening. So it's in effect now through 7 p.m. tomorrow. It does include the metro all the way back towards southwestern Arkansas. 
and even into west central sections of the state. And one more thing mentioned, I'll uh, turn it back over to you, is just our rainfall potential here. Using that same guidance that I was showing you with what future radar may look like, you can see here through 1030 this evening, we've got a lot of shower activity that kind of uh, goes between where we're seeing the uh, rainfall estimation showing up for Little Rock and Hot Springs. So while the city of Little Rock, again, it's very narrow swaths that we're looking at as a possibility, the east side of Little Rock may only get a half of an inch, but there's a possibility that areas just to the west and in Saline County could see uh, possibly another one to two inches in some isolated areas of two inches plus. So that's where we've got to see where these swaths finally set up for this evening. And we really won't be able to pinpoint that exact until we get this activity uh, ongoing for this evening. So just want to make sure to emphasize that this may be shifted just a little bit to the west. It may be shifted a little to the east, but you're kind of right within that area of where if you had some last night, you need to be ready for the possibility of it happening again. Uh, meteorologist Hayden Nix uh, in the, the Weather Center, Arkansas Storm Team, closely watching that potential for flooding. And there are just so many different unknowns as we take a live look over uh, near Lake Hamilton, Hot Springs area, uh, and, and you start to see that just that, that gloomy, the dark clouds, uh, it is certainly uh, a day to stay inside if you don't have to get out and work. Um, Hayden, just a question for you. Um, are we going to see what we saw last night where we're going to know pretty early on where the setup is going to be for these showers because it certainly seemed like the, the 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 storms just kept tracking over and over certain locations if we start to see that today will it do the same thing later today it, it's possible now we did exhaust a lot of moisture last night but we've also had time for it to be replenished so Again, we'll just need to watch as we, we move into this evening where those showers start to activate and the behavior of their orientation. So if, if what we're seeing now, that more south to north movement, if it continues to what we call train, so one heavy shower moves over and then leaves, you've got another one right on the heels of it. We continue to see that and we monitor the what we call rain rates per hour. They have to be at a certain threshold for areas and they're all recalculated every um, you know, every day as we continue to see what has already happened. So rainfall last night's accounted for this. Flash flood guidance may only uh, account for maybe this area. For example, Saline County may only need an inch of rainfall per hour before flash flooding uh, may be possible again. So we'll, of course, know that. We're going to keep that in mind. And if we continue to see trends in one certain direction, you know, we'll have those flash flood warnings that are issued by the National Weather Service, of course, but we'll make sure to keep you updated here as well. But just the latest data has continued to suggest that maybe just right there through the spine of Arkansas in the central sections of the state, there's going to be that possibility of a little bit more of that rainfall activity in the areas that we're already observing quite a lot last night. Okay. Uh, if you're just joining us, meteorologist Hayden Nix is giving us a weather update on the potential for yet a, another day of flooding. Just depends on where some of the, the rain sets up. Uh, and so it, if you don't mind, Hayden, some people are asking to see the radar again. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you can just give us a, a, an idea of what the live radar looks like as you do that. Um, I, we have a question coming in from Cindy. Cindy is asking about what was the app that you referred to, hashtag AR Storm Team. Hayden, um, you were likely referring to the Arkansas Storm Team weather app. Absolutely. If you don't have that, please go ahead and download the Arkansas Storm Team app. It is both in the App Store for iPhones and also in the Android Google Play Store. So make sure to go there, download it. We have an interactive radar there. And you can also check out our video updates. If you didn't know this, we update our website multiple times a day with fresh videos, with new forecast information that comes in. Just like, for example, just a little bit before noon, the National Weather Service changed out the flood watch and extended it in time and added a few counties. So that is when our noon update, which is really awesome because then you've got the latest information right there at your fingertips. But what we're looking at right now here, Mitch, I know some people wanted to look at radar. We have got very light shower activity, so we're not really concerned about anything at this time. But as we continue to see the motion of this rising from south to north, there is that possibility that we could see a little bit more activity picking up going into the evening hours. You can see forecast track is one of our pieces of guidance that we use here, doing a pretty good job of showing what is what it thinks should be happening in real time. And that matches up pretty close to what satellite radar imagery looks like. That's one of those things we always have to monitor if it 
if it matches what's happening real time, it's probably got a pretty good handle of what's going to be taking place later on. Again, this is what radar could look like. It doesn't mean it's exact. We want to focus more on the timing and where it is uh, location-wise in the state and the type of storm mode we could be dealing with. Fortunately, we're not going to be dealing with any severe weather for that matter. The severe weather risk very, very low with the setup. We're just going to be more focused on the rainfall and that possibility of additional flash flooding, especially in areas that already dealt with it last night and have had high rainfall totals over the last 24 hours. So again, as I take you to five o'clock and beyond, you can see the same area as what I was talking about where we've already had rainfall. They could see another little bit of um, flooding concerns within this area. Just a small narrow swath. It was only 15 miles wide, which is pretty incredible. If that uh, swath that we're, we're seeing if forecast track shifts a little to the west or to the east, then the flash flooding concern may not be as uh, big of an issue, especially for this area, but we may have to monitor it for other parts of the state, depending on how much rain is falling at once. And of course, we'll, we'll know that as uh, in real time as we're watching radar tonight. Hayden, do you just have two more minutes? Yeah. Tell me a little bit about Lake Conway, a flood advisory issued up there as we take a live look uh, near uh, Interstate 40 uh, and uh, near Lake Conway. I say that one more time for me, Mitch. I didn't hear that first part. Uh, kind of give us an update on the flood advisory for Lake Conway. That uh, advisory issued uh, earlier today by the National Weather Service um, uh, as we're taking a live look, uh, Interstate 40 uh, near Lake Conway. Okay, let me see if I can get this on and see if there's a possibility that it's still in effect at this time. Um, I know this is a similar area, and actually I'll go back to our rain estimation here and just kind of show you what we had in this similar area. So just like down in the uh, Alexander and Bryan area from last night in Saline County, we had the same orientation kind of drifting northward and impacting areas like Maumelle, but you could see those other colors popping up uh, just east of Conway on 64 in Valonia. This is a similar path of where that heavy rainfall axe is set up there. And I know that we did have some similar reports of anywhere from two to four inches in this location. So in that area, we probably have a lot of the creeks and streams that are currently swollen with a lot of moving water, some of that going into Lake Conway. And so they're kind of just watching that area, making sure that everything's okay and that the drainage can still operate as it should, but also noting that there's a possibility of more rainfall on the way for later today. So just making sure everybody's staying weather aware in this location. They're kind of in the same uh, boat as Eastern Saline County from last night. You've got a lot of rainfall. We've had some time to let the waters recede a little bit, but they're still kind of up. So any additional rainfall is likely going to immediately turn into runoff. So then that could bring that problem of localized flash flooding back into the picture for later tonight. Okay. Um, and Hayden, the, the rain that we see later today, um, is, it, is this going to set up uh, into a situation where people who are not used to seeing flooding will see flooding? Or is this going to affect areas that normally see flooding when heavy rain rains happen? We always have to think about too where you live. And I always try to stress the importance of anybody in your neighborhood, in the local area, pay attention to what happens when we have events like this take place. Know the typical spots that you always see trouble with and, and make sure to take a mental note of that. Where I live, I know that there's a couple of problematic spots. When it rains a certain amount, it's likely going to flood. And guess what happened last night? We had that rain verify. I made sure to, to keep that in mind. And we did have those reports coming in that we had some road closures around my neighborhood. So uh, that's something else that I just want to emphasize with people. This is going to be likely the case for uh, all of the trouble spots for tonight. And I can't name those off in, in any particular location, but just some of those areas that we know that are conducive for that in your neck of the woods, uh, anybody that's watching, just uh, make sure to note that for tonight. If you've had a lot of rainfall here lately and you expect more rainfall to come in tonight, just remember that and try to avoid those locations. And if you absolutely have no choice but to be out this evening when it gets dark, if you see a road close sign, don't try to drive around it. We have a perfect example of something that uh, I found on social media, and I apologize I don't have it up here on this screen, but a culvert washed out from underneath a paved road. It just disappeared with all the rainfall. In and Grant what County. happened is likely the water went underneath that culvert and helped lift it up and then you know, send it on its way down the creek. 
And with the water being high, you may have had no idea that it even went missing. You just think water's over the road. Then you try to drive into it and you realize that you just sent your car or vehicle down into a big hole. And that's why we wanna make sure people see those and take those signs seriously. If the road's closed, it's closed for a reason. It's for your safety. And with it being at night, especially in the evening, people are driving around. It is a Wednesday evening, people are going to church. Uh, if we see the rainfall and you see water over roadway and the road signs aren't up yet, make sure to turn around and go another direction. Don't be in a hurry and just try to find a different way home if it is possible. And if you can, make sure to uh, give your local um, uh, road crews or even the emergency uh, pit officials in your, in your area a heads up, hey, I've got water over such and such road. It may be a good idea if you've got something to, to put it up so someone doesn't drive through it. And I think you're referring to Grant County, that area. Uh, yes. out there. The, uh, yeah. Um, Hayden Nix, appreciate your time this uh, afternoon. Uh, thank you very much. We yep. will continue to monitor the very latest from the Arkansas Storm Team. All right. Thank you, bitch. All right. Thank you, meteorologist Hayden Nix, watching uh, all parts of the radar for us today. Again, live updates continuing on air and online as the Arkansas Storm Team tracks these, these showers, their rain showers, but that potential for flooding. Your next newscast at 4 o'clock on Channel 4.